First off, I'd like to ask uh, Mayor Jenny Dow to come up on stage. <laughs> Jenny's move into local government came after she attended a few council meetings and caught the bug. She stood for election in March 2004 and has loved almost every minute of it since. And I should put almost is actually in brackets. <laughs> Jenny sits on the steering committee of the Australian Council of Local Government. And this links to the federal government with over 550 mayors, presidents and their councils throughout Australia. In September 2008, Jenny was elected mayor here in Lismore. She's a patron of 15 community organisations, a justice of the police, uh, of the peace, that was a bit of a faux pas. <laughs> and uh, she's also a volunteer with the Lismore Rainforest Botanic Gardens. She loves her garden and she also loves her book group. Thanks, Paul. You've done some homework there. Look, I too would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Bundjalung people. They're the ones for up to... F a 50,000 years or even more have looked after each other and this land without problem for all those years. We have a lot to learn and in five minutes we cannot afford to throw that all away. So thank you, Reg. <laughs> I'd like to acknowledge that some of my fellow councillors are here tonight, Deputy Mayor Isaac Smith, uh, Councillor Simon Clough, Councillor Graham Meineke and Councillor Neil Marks. Any other councillors here that I haven't acknowledged? But I'm really pleased that council has a strong following here tonight. I brought my... Yeah. I brought my iPhone up here. I'm not going to use it while I'm here apart from taking a photo of you gorgeous people. But tonight... Someone from the Northern Star is live tweeting to the rest of the world about what's happening in this meeting. Good on Northern Star. <laughs> now tonight I want to talk from two perspectives. At the start of what I'm going to say is the council decisions. So the things that officially we have decided. I can't go further than that without taking off my council hat and speaking from the heart and speaking personally. I will make it very clear when I am speaking on behalf of the community and the things that we've done as a council but without resolution. And I'll also make it clear when I'm speaking just from, for myself. So tonight, to start off, I would like to tell you what council has done. Last year, on December the 13th at our December meeting, we carried a resolution that places a moratorium on all coal seam gas activity, including seismic testing, drilling, and other associated activity on council-owned and operated land. <laughs> now that came to one day difference to a year after we made our first resolution. And that was, in December 2010, we resolved that Council unreservedly supported the New South Wales Farmers Association moratorium on all coal seam gas mining in New South Wales. <laughs> if you want to see what Council has determined, on our web page, there is a link down the left-hand side to coal seam gas and there's a whole list there of how council, what council has done. So there's a timeline, if you like, runs to about two pages of the things that we have done. So this council has been concerned for over a year about coal seam gas. When I think about coal seam gas, I also would suggest that most people in this audience, given three years ago, had never heard of coal seam gas given 18 months ago, had never heard the word fracking. And yet, recently, in the Australian, one of the dictionaries, what was the word, what was the dictionary, anyone know? Macquarie, Macquarie Dictionary named fracking as one of the words of the year for the last year, because now it's in everyone's lexicon. We didn't know it before, but we know about it now. Okay, 
The concerns of council reflect the diverse concerns of community. So I'd now like to talk about some of the things I raised in the Senate inquiry. Now, this submission had been circulated to councillors, but it wasn't part of the resolution, so I need to make that clear. When I appeared before the Senate inquiry in September last year, or August last year, in Alstonville, I summarised the concerns that we were hearing from the community. The paper that I put together was, was, had my input, it had other councillors' input a little bit, and it had staff input. But it was not position of council, but it's the issues that concern us. I'm just going to summarise some of those, and I stress again, these were not part of a council resolution. So the con conditions or the concerns that we raised, first about, it, about, about environmental concerns. I'm not going to go into details here. There are lots of people who know much more about produced water, about groundwater, and about the potential for methane leakage. But they are some of the concerns that we had uh, and uh, that we were hearing from the community. The other issues that I raised were about economic impact, about jobs, and whether jobs were really a factor here. I'd like to digress now and give you some personal information that I received about Gunnedah. Gunnedah has had coal mining for a long time. They're now getting coal seam gas mining. At the moment, Gunnedah has a population, standing population of 10,000 people. So much smaller, about a quarter of the size or even less of Lismore, they have at the moment 450 houses for sale. That means that people have left town. The jobs are not there, and to my mind it's a fallacy if we're talking about this industry creating jobs. That's my personal view. The other issues that I raised to the Senate inquiry about food security and agricultural activity. It is obvious that this area is highly fertile. We have the food potential to be not just the food bowl for ourselves, but the food bowl for less fertile regions. Tonight, many of you will have been to the produce market in the CBD. I had dinner there. I got a basket full of food that's in my car to take home tonight. We want to buy local food. Many of our restaurants are celebrating and naming the foods on their, in, on their menu that are local food. We do not want to see uh, that in, in any way jeopardised. And that, I would say, would be the view of everyone here. Whether you are pro, and I don't suppose there is anyone, but there could be, pro coal seam gas or not, that protection of our agricultural uh, uh, health and well-being must be protected. Yes. The, other, the other issues that are linked with economy is clearly tourism. Uh, Byron Bay and the, fur the areas further inland like us pride ourselves on being the second most uh, visited area outside Sydney. After Blue Mountains, we have so many tourists who come here. They are coming to see our beautiful and pristine environment. They are not coming to see it dotted all over the place with coal seam gas drills. The next economic one is about landholder agreements. I know some farmers are doing it really tough. The ha money in the hand may be, in the short term, very attractive. But what happens afterwards? What happens after that, that land of a hectare, the size of a, of a drilling rig, what happens after the mine closes down? There is a life to coal seam gas drilling. What happens after that? The money has long gone. What's happened to the legacy? What's happened to those, the farmers and the second and third generation and future generations to come? So short-term gain might look attractive in the short term, but in the long term, there are difficulties. Uh, the last thing I'd like to mention under the economy is royalty to reg for royalties for regions. This is a fallacy, to my mind, personal view, but based on some information, that royalties are only paid after the first five years. They're not paid for the first five years. And even after year five, they are 2% climbing each year up to 10, by which time the gas is all gone and there's no royalty to be paid. 
Gunnada is facing the situation they have been refused inclusion in the royalties for regions. So their gas has been taken, their economy is being severely um, restricted, and they're not even getting that royalties to, for regions back to. So if we think about royalties to regions, it's not that cash cow that people might think. I'd like to talk about what I believe is the, uh, the greatest risks. These are the things that I also presented in, in Alstonville, and they are the social impacts. I am very concerned about setting farmer or landholder against landholder. I'm very concerned about the loss of amenity for farm, uh, farm owners, about the physical impact, the light, the noise, the dust, all those things on the farmers around. But to me, the biggest issue is that split in the community, the personal cost that we, are, we have the potential to see of one farmer who says yes and neighbours who say no, but whose land is affected because of the horizontal drilling that's going underneath. 2480 postcard code has one of the highest take-ups of solar power in Australia. I'm very proud of that. To me, to my mind, and something I put towards this committee was that this emphasis on CSG is distracting us and governments from investing more in renewable energy. I'm sure, like me, you would like to congratulate Chris Vandenberg from Danoon. Is Chris here? Chris has, is wanting to do a large solar farm on his property. It's been out there for a, a public exhibition. Do you know how many letters have come in, submissions? One. And as far as I know, it was four. <laughs> solar, solar farms, solar is not an issue. It is not setting property owner against property owner, as coal seam gas is. This issue has united the community like nothing before. I've never seen anything like this in my years in public life, not just on council, but anywhere else. We have traditionally a hippie beside a farmer. We have a hippie who would normally perhaps say to some farmers, redneck R.M. Williams, excuse the language, but you can imagine, redneck R.M. Williams, conservative. You have a farmer who says long-haired, smelly, sandal-wearing hippie who doesn't, who doesn't shower. They are now talking to each other. It's my belief that even in the worst possible times, when our community is at threat, we come together. We talk like nothing, no other thing that brings us together. People are getting to know their neighbours and other people in the community and learning from each other about the skills of representation, about protest, about peaceful process. And can I say at that point, I decry all attacks on people. I am appalled that some people who think they are doing the right thing are attacking the wives, the families of people who are working in this coal seam gas industry. Just as I spoke and said, <laughs> just as I spoke out against the people who used spray paint to scrawl all over our town, no, CH, so no CSG. I know that the organisers of the rally at which that happened deplored it too, and I would urge you to work within the law and come together peacefully and not derail this process by um, antisocial behaviour or, in fact, criminal behaviour. So please be respectful, but be strong. I would like to end by saying, Mutual understanding develops and a realisation that we all have a role in protecting this, our land and our community for the future of our children, our grandchildren and future generations. The risks are too great from letting this go. The alternatives are there. I would say this community, personal view, this community does not want CSG. Thank you.